When I was 13 years old, I first watched the opening scene of The Wolf of Wall Street. I'm sure you know the film, where all the glamour of the money is revealed, and eventually it became my object of possession as well. I kept it for a number of years, but it changed during one whole day. At that time, we were driving along the roads of Palo Alto in California. I was impressed by the headquarters of those high-tech companies doing such staggering stuff. It was eye-opening. My parents were curious about my opinion, and I said something that went on the lines of this. Maybe, maybe one day I will settle a company here. Just give me some time. Just give me some time. And believe it or not, this was actually the first time that I ever thought of actually planning something, building my own way towards something. I was in this blissful feeling of being a godlike creator. But suddenly, something broke the tension. I was confused. I asked questions like, come on, with what and how? And what about the right branch? Pretty soon I realized that a human being, as I am, is equipped with the most powerful tool, the tool that each of us possesses. Its name is time. I noticed that time is more valuable than money, because you can always make more money, but you can never get more time. And as Warren Buffett once said, it's the only thing you can't buy. I mean, I can buy anything I want, basically, but I can't buy time. So, Warren Buffett, one of the richest men on the planet who can buy everything apart from time. The moment we realize the value of time, we notice the value of life, respectively. But do we even know how small the likelihood of becoming a human being is? I bet you don't, because the answer to that question is 400 trillion to one. Those are the real odds of coming to existence. But as a reference point, take this list of things that are seemingly unlikely to happen. So, being killed in a car crash, 5,000 to one. Becoming a movie star, 1.5 million to one. Being killed by falling out of bed, 2 million to one. Being killed in a plane crash, 25 million to one. Winning a lottery, that's what we want, 175 million to one. And finally, dying from a shark attack, 300 million to one. So as we can see, we are more apt to experience all of these unusualities combined than actually to be born. And in this very selected life, we focus so much on how much money we make that we forget about the ultimate currency of life, which, precisely speaking, is time. Now, I want you to imagine a scenario where there is a bank that creates your own personal account with $86,400 every single day, and there is no carry forward. So, obviously, you lose all that you haven't used. And this happens every day for the rest of your life. So, what would you do? I'm certain you would use every single penny and make the most use of it. You'd make your life an incredible adventure, right? But the interesting thing is that each of us has such a bank. Every day, life offers us 86,400 seconds. There is no overdraft. We can't own it, but we can make the most use of it on anything we want. Unfortunately, nothing lasts forever. This line over there represents the average life expectancy of a pole. We have to keep in mind that this is just an appro approximate number. Appro approximate number. We never really know how long we're going to live, and this might be longer 
or a bit shorter than that. With all that time given, at the age of around 20, we start to work. And we maintain working all the way until we turn 65. Now, as you can see clearly, that is the most of our life. And that is why it is so important to devote these years, these powerful seconds, on something that makes you glad to be alive. They shouldn't be just a 9 to 5, waiting for Friday or a payment, because in life, we can either do something that we love or that we don't. So you better do something that truly drives you. <laughs> Obviously, we don't work for 24 hours a day for 45 years continuously. But I am entirely sure that those hours at work truly affect how we feel sooner or later on. Let's maintain that an average Paul spends his life 78 years. It takes 78 years. We spent 28.3 years of our life sleeping. That's almost a third of our life. 10.5 years working. We spent nine years on TV and social media. We spent six years doing chores. We spent four years eating and drinking. Three and a half years in an education. Two and a half years is spent on grooming. Two and a half years is also spent on shopping. One and a half year on childcare, and 1.3 years commuting. If we do simple math by deducting, we get nine years. So do we really want to live this limited life when it can be much broader? Not to mention about the fact that an average Paul spends four years on a hangover. Yeah, that's exciting, isn't it? But there once was a study on elderly people, all of them facing death, getting close to their last breath, being asked in a hospital to reflect their biggest regret in life, mostly answered that they don't regret the things they did, but the things they didn't do. And I do hope and believe that you are all well, but now it is time for us to reflect, especially us, the students. Remember that we've got nothing to lose, but everything to gain. It's all in your heart and in your hands. Thank you all very much.